In this lecture, we're going to talk about compound interest. All right, we'll start by talking about several different formulas that can be used to compute interest. The first is called the simple interest formula. And that's given by the following, I equals P times R times T, where I is the interest that will be charged or earned, P is the principal or the amount borrowed or invested, R is the per annum interest rate, written as a decimal, and T is the time in years. But in this section, we're going to be talking mostly about compound interest, which is given by the following formula. A equals P times one minus R over N raised to the N times T power, where again, P is the principal invested, R is the interest rate written as a decimal, a is the amount of years, uh, the amount that you would have after t years, and n is the number of times per year that interest is compounded. So when dealing with compound interest, we need to determine how many times per year interest is compounded, and so we look for key words to help us out. If you see the word annually, then n is going to be equal to 1. Semi-annually means n would be equal to 2. Quarterly would give us n is equal to 4. Monthly would give us n is equal to 12 and daily would give us n is equal to 365. Finally, we have the option of having interest compounded continuously, which would use a different formula, a equals p times e raised to the rt. So let's go through some examples. Our first example says you invest $50 into an account that has a 6% interest rate compounded monthly. Find the amount in the account after three years. So since we have interest compounded monthly, we'll use the compound interest formula, A equals P times one plus R over N raised to the NT power. And we need to identify which values in this formula we know. So let's read through the problem again. It says you invest $50, so that means that P will equal 50, into an account that has 6% interest, so R would equal 0 0.06, since we write interest as a decimal, compounded monthly, so N is equal to 12. So with that information, we want to find the amount, which means A is what we're looking for, the amount in the account after three years. So T is equal to three. So we take the information that we know here and we plug it into the formula. So that'll give us A equals 50, times one plus 0 0.06 divided by 12, all raised to the 12 times three power. And so we can plug this information into our calculator and we see that the amount in the account after three years is approximately $59.83. Let's look at a few more examples. This time you invest $700 into an account that has 6% interest compounded daily find the amount in the account after two years. So again, we're using compounded interest, so we'll use the same formula, and we need to determine what values to plug in. So if we read through the problem again, it says you invest $700, so P is 700, into an account that has 6% interest, so R is 0 0.06, compounded daily, which means N will equals 365. Find the amount, so A is what we're looking for in the account after two years. And that means T equals two. So again, we plug all this information that we have into the formula and we get A equals 700 times one plus 0 0.06 divided by 365, all raised to the 365 times two. And if we evaluate that with our calculator, we'll get approximately $789.24. cents. Here's another option though. We could invest that $700 into an account that has 6% interest compounded monthly. So if that's the case, again, find the amount in the account after two years. So we're gonna use the same formula. I'd like for you guys to take a few minutes, give this a try on your own, and then follow along with me when you're finished or if you get stuck. So let's identify our values. So we have $700 in the account, so our P is 700. A 6% interest rate means that R is equal to 0 0.06. If it's compounded monthly, N would be 12. We're trying to find the future amount, so we don't know what A is, that's what we're looking for. And after two years means T is equal to two. 
Plug all of those values into the formula, we get A equals 700 times 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12, all raised to the 12 times 2 power, which when evaluated gives us $789.01. So if we compare these two results, we see that we make just a little bit more money if the interest is compounded daily. Here's one last example. We invest $100 into an account that has 12% interest compounded continuously. Find the amount in the account after three and three quarters years. So this time the interest is compounded continuously, so we're gonna use the other formula, A equals P E to the RT. Reading through the problem again, we see that we invest $100, so our principal P is 100. The account has a 12% interest rate, so R will be 0.12. We're asked to find the amount, so A is our unknown, after three and three quarter years, so T will equal 3.75. We'll plug everything that we know into the formula, so A will equal 100 times E raised to the 0 0.12 times 3.75 power. And if we evaluate that with our calculator, we'll get approximately $156.83. So now we're going to use the same formulas to solve a different type of problem. These are called present value problems. Basically, given the other information, we want to find the amount that would need to be invested, so we want to find the principal at the present time. So our first example says find the principal needed to get $75 after three years invested at 8% interest compounded quarterly. Since the interest is compounded quarterly, we'll use the same formula for compound interest, P times 1 plus R over N raised to the NT power. And we'll read through the problem again to identify our values. Since it asks us to find the principal, P is going to be our unknown value. We want to get $75, so the amount A is equal to 75. After three years, so T equals 3. Invested at 8% interest, so R equals 0 0.08. Compounded quarterly, so N will equal 4. Again, we take this information that we know, we'll plug it into the formula, and get 75 equals P times 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 4, all raised to the 4 times 3 power. If we evaluate that with a calculator, we're going to get 75 equals 1.268P. To solve for P, we'll divide both sides by 1.268, and we'll get P is approximately $59.15. Here's another present value example. Find the principal needed to get $800 after two and a half years interested at 8% interest compounded continuously. Take a couple minutes and see if you can figure this one out. Once you've finished, or if you get stuck, continue the lecture and work along with me. All right, so since this is a compounded continuously problem, we'll use the other formula, A equals P times E to the RT. We'll read through the problem again to identify our values. Since it asks us to find the principal, P is gonna be our unknown value. We want to get $800, so A is 800. After two and a half years, so T will equal 2.5 invested at 8%, so R will equal 0 0.08. We'll plug those values into our formula and get 800 equals P times E raised to the 0 0.08 times 2.5 power. If we evaluate the right-hand side using a calculator, we'll get 800 equals 1.2214P. To solve for P, we'll divide both sides by 1.2214, and find out that we need to invest approximately $654.98 right now in order to get $800 in two and a half years. All right, next we'll talk about effective rate of return. So to find the effective rate of return on an investment, we'll do the following. First, compute the total amount using the compound interest formula. Second, we'll find the interest earned by looking at the difference between the amount A and the principal invested, P. And finally, we'll use the simple interest formula with the interest that we found in step two to determine what the effective rate is. So we'll solve for R. So let's look at an example of this. 
we want to find the effective rate of return for an investment at 6% interest compounded monthly. So we'll use our compound interest formula. When we go through to identify our values, we weren't given a P. So we'll leave that blank for now. We also weren't given an A, nor an amount of time T. The percentage rate is 6%, so R will equal 0 0.06, and interest is compounded monthly, so N will equal 12. So since we weren't given a P or an A, we'll pick arbitrary values for them. Let's assume that P is equal to 100 and T is equal to 1. These are numbers that are pretty easy to work with. It doesn't matter what you choose for P and T as long as you use the same values throughout the entire problem. So using the compound interest formula, A would equal 100 times 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12 raised to the 12 times 1 power which if we simplify with a calculator will give us approximately $106.16. So now that we know the amount, we can find the amount of interest earned by taking that amount and subtracting our principal. So I will equal 106.16 minus 100. So the amount of interest that was earned is $6.16. Finally, we'll use the simple interest formula, I equals PRT, with the information given to us, to figure out what the effective rate is. So I was 6.16, P we said was 100, we're looking for R, and T we said was 1. So to solve for R, we'll divide by 100, which gives us 0 0.0616. If we transform that decimal to a percentage, we'll see that the rate of return, or the effective rate of return, is equal to 6.16%. And finally, we'll talk about doubling or tripling an investment. So if you double your investment, you can think of the amount earned, or the amount that you have, to be two times the principal. And to triple an investment, A would equal three times P. So using this information, let's do an example. What rate of interest, compounded annually, would be required to double an investment in six years? Since the interest is compounded annually, we'll use our basic compound interest formula. And we'll go through the problem again to check and see, to, to identify our values. So we're looking for the rate of interest, so R is our unknown, that's what we're trying to solve for. The rate is compounded annually, so N equals 1. We're trying to double our investment, so let's say that P is equal to P and then A would equal 2P. This way it doesn't really matter what we invest. P is equal to P and A is equal to 2P. And we want this doubling to occur in six years, so T will equal six. Now we plug that information into the formula and we'll get 2P equals P times one plus R over one raised to the one times sixth power. We can divide both sides of the equation by P and simplify to give us 2 equals 1 plus r raised to the sixth. Now to solve for r, we need to take the sixth root of both sides of the equation. So the sixth root of 2 is equal to 1 plus r. And then we'll subtract 1 from both sides. So r equals the sixth root of 2 minus 1. And if we evaluate that with a calculator, we'll get r equals 0 0.1225 changing from a decimal to a percentage, that'll give us R equals 12.25%.